Recently, we talked about the microbes in our gut and how they regulate our immune system. And now we know that intestinal bacteria may actually trigger autoimmune disease in people that are susceptible to it, like things like rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes and multiple sclerosis. So what does it mean to be autoimmune? How does this work? That's a good place to start. Autoimmunity really is about self-consumption meaning that our immune system doesn't recognize ourself as something that's okay and it starts making antibodies against things like kidney liver lung skin so it's like you're allergic to yourself exactly and we found now gee after we've known this for 30 years like this isn't brand new news it's just amazing to me how breakthrough we found out that that the gut regulates the immune system well duh i mean 70 percent of the immune system is where it's in the gut and we've known about leaky gut and we've known about something called dysbiosis which means the organization of the ecosystem of the gut meaning what kinds of microbes live there and is it in a balance that's healthy or not and what this particular article that was published in the june issue of the public library of science is talking about is that eureka we know now that if you have a certain kind of of, uh, intestinal microflora that's present that your risk for developing an autoimmune disease are a little bit higher So they're thinking that maybe we can manipulate the microflora of the gut so that certain diseases can be predicted before they happen. That's possible. Not exactly a major breakthrough, but it would be for the medical profession more so than it would be for people who are into orthomolecular or nutritional medicine. So do you think that this knowledge is going to help to prevent Uh, some of these uh, autoimmune diseases in people that are susceptible? I do think that that's possible. We've known for a long time that if you have an abnormal ecosystem in the gut, because it works like a buffer between the outside world and the inside world, because it's in that space, right, that's in between the two, it's not really inside the internal milieu of the body, it's this tube that goes through us from the mouth to the anus that has uh, all this activity going in, And what the gut actually does is it absorbs uh, foods, it digests foods, it keeps the toxins out, it maintains a barrier that can keep big molecules and certain kinds of things like bacteria and toxins from coming across the gut into the body. So when we look at what lives there, it makes a big difference in terms of the products that those things make. For example, if there's a lot of shigella or salmonella or c difficile or c difficile those bacteria there it's apt to cause problems when they overgrow by making toxins that upset the barrier that that's in there between the gut and the inside of the body now when you talk about the gut and then you talk about the gi tract is that all the same it's how do synonymous. you define the gut it's the same I, when i talk about the gut i'm talking about the whole gi tract because a lot of people think of gut like cat gut you know <laughs> well tennis players <laughs> might i don't know that many doctors would, unless they're tennis players, that's an interesting point. Or maybe with a guitar. Yeah, or... maybe, I don't know if they, they do that, but that, that could, I'm not a musician. But that's an interesting point, you're funny. <laughs> so when we're looking at, at this system, how, when it goes awry, what happens? Because there's 70% of the immune system right there around this gut tube, this intestinal tube, uh, it maintains a very sensitive balance with that barrier which is right there between the internal and external world. Now when the permeability across that lining is changed, particularly in the small intestine, and that's the longest part of the intestine and where most of the absorption occurs, when that permeability is disturbed and it starts to have pores that are too big, then things like whole bacteria, big molecules that shouldn't get across, and many other substances can get across and because the immune system is right on the other side of this membrane, this tube, it will respond to what comes across. And whoever would have thought that things like this could lead to rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis and type 1 diabetes? and Well, it adds to it. I'm not sure that that's actually the cause of. All, just because we have antibodies doesn't mean it's the cause of, but it's something to keep in mind. And what I'm getting to with this is that when we have an influx of too many big molecules that are not uh, ones that the body recognizes as self, we start making antibodies against them and start producing cells that will attack them. And if they, if we overwhelm that system, what happens is there's an autoimmune reaction that occurs where sometimes if there's a 
chemical that comes across is very similar to something in our lung or kidney or skin, then it cross-reacts against what comes across into the body as well as that particular organ system. So it becomes something that can set the stage for us attacking our own bodies. So we need to be sure that the ecosystem in the gut is, is healthy and that we keep it healthy by eating the right foods, not putting toxins in there, not having a lot of stress. It produces hormones that will upset that balance. Well, there are medications, too, that can cause this leaky gut. Absolutely. Things like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, birth control pills, steroids. steroids. There's a whole list of things. Antibiotics, uh, another one, that do it routinely. So when we're talking about the intestinal tract microflora, the stool that's in there, there's a tremendous amount of metabolic activity. It does a lot of things that help us to have the vitamins that we need to detoxify against uh, different kinds of toxins that we've processed in the, in the, in the body and at the service uh, very well. It helps us to absorb the food that we eat. Absorb food, uh, to digest it, uh, to keep the toxins out. So if we can respect that more, and if medical science continues on the track that it is, maybe we've got a chance of solving this problem of this epidemic of autoimmune diseases.